Welcome, everybody, to the Babes and Babies podcast this week. We told you it was going to be weird, and you didn't hear the, this is Liz, this is Jade, and this is Carly, and you're listening to Babes and Babies, because we're in segments this week. Because, you guys, it's the holidays, okay? Things get weird around the holidays, and actually, you did just hear it because I said it, but it wasn't as exciting. Today, uh, my best friend, this is Carly, by the way, my best friend, Heather Dodson Thompson and I are going to talk about some health things and then you'll hear from Liz and happy holidays to you. So, hello Heather. Hi. <laughs> that was a very strange intro uh-huh. I just did. <laughs> um, okay, you guys. So, Heather and I... <laughs> Sorry, not podcast savvy here. <laughs> hey David, how's it going? Um, that's Heather's husband calling right now. And it says babe instead of his name. And I think that's really cute. Um, okay. So Heather and I have known each other. We were in a show in Oklahoma. In 2006. I remember. I love that you remember the dates because people are like, when did you do a cruise ship? I'm like, I don't know. In my life I did that. (laughs) You know, when did you do this? I don't know. One time in my life. When did you live in New York city? I don't know. Sometime (laughs) in my life. Um, okay. So we were in a show together called Smokey Joe's Cafe and and we became besties. Oh yeah. Well, Carly. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say too much. What? 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 How, what are we doing here? Oh, are we you can say whatever full? you want. Okay. Well, um, Carly was in musical theater OU, and the girls there were not being very. They weren't nice. To they me. weren't. They were nice. Well, I, mean, I like came in late, and they no, were, she was extremely younger. talented. No. Oh. I, okay. okay. Anyway, <laughs> we all know that some exactly theater people and how competitive they can be with each other. They didn't like me. No, they didn't like her. But that's okay. I did because she told a story about her cat on stage. And I don't even remember what the story was, but I was like, I really want to be friends with her. This is so funny because yesterday we were talking about this apparent cat story that I told, <clears throat> which I don't even know why we were telling stories. But she's like, I knew I wanted to be your friend with the cat story. And I'm like, what? And the only cat story I ever remember was one time I put my cat on a leash and I put it outside connected to a tree because I was trying to give it some, you know, some space. I was trying to let it have some nice fresh air. And then I looked out and my cat was gone. And I mean, I found her. She was down by the creek, but I was like, oh my gosh. Like I almost just like let my cat run away. But that's not even that funny of a story. The only funny part was like a cat was on a leash and it was, yes, a matching pink collar and a matching pink leash. I feel but. like it was the way you told it though. There's a lot of hands and a lot of actions going on. Oh, you may yeah, have even turned into true. a cat at one point. I probably did, to be honest. I was like, <laughs> and now I'm feeling the way the cat felt. <laughs> that sounds very theatery. Yes. Um, but anyway, so we became best friends. We used to take all these trips to Branson, Missouri. Oh. Well, her Can't parents had a condo and we love like... Evan hates that I love Branson so much. I think it's the, one of the greatest places that's in the history of ever. I mean, old people. Old people, like the Titanic Museum where the Titanic looks like it's coming out of the earth. All of the funny shows that are out there. Well, what was that thing that we drove by? You never know what you're going to drive, drive no. by. Like the we went a couple knobbers. weeks ago and we were driving down and there was, yeah, Santa outside taking pictures. Stop. What, who do you think was with Santa? Elvis. A live reindeer. A no. true yes, that's a, amazing. A reindeer. Yeah, I mean, you never know. You just never know. There's a Branson. reindeer on the side of the road with Santa, like the side of the road. How, like in front of something? Oh, like, like right off seventy six, the main drag. There was Santa and a reindeer. That's so bizarre. Wow. Yeah. Now I just want to go and see him. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had a lot of good times there, and one of my this is we're actually getting to what we're going to talk about today. But one of my favorite memories of Heather was. We were driving to Branson and Heather's dad was about to come mow her yard and we were driving and we were like an hour down the road and she's like, no, I have to turn around. And I'm like, why? And she goes, I forgot my vitamins. And I'm like, Heather, that's so weird. And she's like, no, if my dad sees my vitamins on the table, he's going to be really mad that I'm gone for like four nights and I don't have my vitamins. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) And we did, we turned around. And we went back to get the so-called vitamins. And it was a, I mean, a, like not a Kroger bag because it wasn't from Kroger, but it was a big bag. Duffel. It could have been duffel. It could have been a duffel. Like a paper sack filled to the top <laughs> with vitamins. And I was like, this is so weird. And I'm like, what are all those things? And she's like, oh, I'll show you tonight when I take them. And she, when she took them, I'm like looking down at my hand right now because her whole palm 
was filled with them. And it only took her like two shots to take them off. Oh, sometimes I can do one shot if I'm really. And there's like, Heather, there is like 40 pills. Yeah. It's be, I was trained. My dad would bring me like a whole handful of vitamins at age five. It was just like. And that's just, that was just a that thing. was my life. And can I you also know? say that, Heather, looks, you look 10, 15 years younger than you actually are. Well, that, yeah, I mean, I do look younger, but that could be genetics because my grandmother lived to like 100. It could but, be genetics. It's also the handful of vitamins. But she took vitamins. vitamins. You take it. So, hey, you never know. <laughs> Is it genetics? No. Um, okay. So. Let's talk about these vitamins. What? Okay. I like, I take like a sugar bear hair vitamin and I'm like, okay, there's my vitamin for the day, but that's not what you do. You take like, how, how do you look this way and how do you stay healthy? I don't understand. What do you take? Well, so it's... What are the 47 different vitamins that you take? Excuse me. It's been a rough morning. I'm on my third (laughs) cup of coffee. Okay. So I will say first, it's a holistic thing. So you can take all the vitamins in the world, but if you eat like crap... You know, yeah. if you don't sleep, if right. you drink a bunch, you know, it's really not going to do a whole lot of good. But when you what blend... a bummer. I know. <laughs> hey, but it might can help. You You're know right. what I mean? You're right. Take a liver cleanse after a night. Maybe that will help. But... um. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let me interject with also... Her, she comes from a health food family because her dad owns the oldest health food store yes. in... Oklahoma called <clears throat> Dotson's Health Food Store. So if you're in Norman, Oklahoma, you just stop on by and say hello to Mr. Dotson and get yes, all of Yes, he's things. pretty much the... And he's actually was a... He ins, has inspired me because he's a pioneer and everything and he's very humble. But like I would say 20 years ago, he was telling people to like take vitamin D and probiotics. Yeah. And he was just way ahead of his time, but not for like just for because he did so much research yeah you know like that's his thing is he wants to help people you're like that too though every single time i'd be like hey heather how i have this problem and you'd be like these are the things you need to take well and it's important for me to keep up with the latest research because honestly a lot of doctors out there i mean they're busy saving lives they're busy doing things surgeries and, and now how you many, are <laughs> no <laughs> but doctors don't have a lot of extra time to keep up on the latest research and it's constantly changing yeah so now you might go to a doctor with you know something and they're like well, take an antibiotic which really now the research is you know sometimes they're necessary and we want to keep that out but now there's antibiotic resistance so now it's just kind of shifting and maybe mm-hmm. it's best that it runs its course you yeah. know so it's like there's it's just always changing and a lot yeah. of times doctors don't have time to keep up with it. Well, so and everyone comes into Dotson's and I mean you used to work there like your whole life and people right. would say, "Hey, I have this problem." And you you always know like the herbs for people to take. Yeah, I mean that. we I mean we try to help because a lot of times people that are coming into my dad's store have tried the doctor. Most mm. most every, I mean they're like I just can't get well and I've been to the doctor and they they're kind of at their wits end. Right. So then they're like okay, I need to go another let another me try a different here. way. Right. And with chronic illnesses, <clears throat> a lot of times doctors have their, you know, like steroids or something like that right. where that's kind of what's in their wheelhouse and right. so they and those will only work for so long right. so it's kind of like what else what's else going on here right so if you've been a long time listener of the show you know that we have an affinity for cute gym wear jade and carly are moms i just really have no excuse but i love wearing <laughs> gym clothes every day um but especially when it's affordable I also not sure about you, but when I slip into something comfortable, uh, like yoga pants and a tank that actually fits my curves and looks flattering and doesn't break the bank, it makes me feel motivated to go to the gym. I'm like, I'm already in gym clothes. I might as well go. But with all that being said, I'm super excited that we are partnering with a company founded by the beautiful Kate Hudson, uh, Fabletics. It's a fashion-focused activewear brand with a mission to empower women by making a healthy, active lifestyle accessible to everyone. You feel nice in them and they are high quality. Honestly, guys, I got some pants from here and I can tell you that they do fit me so much better. And I actually have worked out more <laughs> since I start, since I started using their clothes just because I feel so comfortable in them. I feel strong in them. I feel empowered in them. I know that that sounds super silly, but when I put on gym clothes, I'm like, dang girl, you look good. 
then I want to continue to feel good and look good about myself. So right now, Fabletics is offering our listeners an incredible deal that you do not want to miss. You get two leggings for only $24. That's a $99 value when you sign up for a VIP. Just go to fabletics.com slash babes to take advantage of this deal now. That's fabletics.com slash babes to get two leggings for $24. Also, free shipping on orders over $49. Guys, you can't really beat this still. And if there's any guys listening, waiting for that last minute Christmas gift, I mean, it's at this point, you're already a little bit late, but if you want to get something extra or even something to motivate you for the new year, uh, go to fabletics.com slash babes and try out their VIP. You'll always see new brands and styles, the collections that they're partnering with. You can get up to 50% off regular pricing in the VIP club and you get instant access to their latest collections. Plus, the best part is that there's no commitment to order on a regular basis. You can skip any month that you want. Get going at fabletics.com slash babes to get to the best active wear that you will ever wear. Okay. So wait, what do you take every day? Okay. Oh gosh. In the winter, it's different in the winter and summer. What? You know, it is, oh but I would say it's really important. And most actually doctors now are doing for, it doesn't even cost. It's covered under insurance, vitamin D levels. So I would oh, say okay. one of the most important things is to get your vitamin D levels checked because it could be <clears throat> anything from skin problems to infertility. I mean, low vitamin D levels are not good. Wow. I didn't know so, that. And you can go to, and you, and you might not have it, but you can, it's an easy fing, finger prick. And I took my daughter to the pediatrician and um, the first thing, I mean, she's more holistic, but she is a medical doctor. She's uh-huh. like, let's check her vitamin D levels. So there are some doctors that are keeping up with that. Uh, that was um, one of the, our pediatrician, that was like the first thing they were like, hey, you need to have, you buy those vitamin D drops yeah. for Bella. Although I am going to be honest, I think maybe I gave it to her once and then I totally forgot. But they it's did tell hard. me to do it. So vitamins are something, and my husband is the worst about this. Like it's consistency. It's a lifestyle. It's yeah. not like I took vitamins yesterday. Maybe in the next couple of days I'll take more. Yeah. No, it's got to be every day. You know, it really yeah. does. And that's really annoying. But um that's just the way it has to be when you're like taking vitamin D or something like that. It has to be consistent. Yeah. Um, to really change your levels. So I would say vitamin D is very important. Magnesium is uh, so many people are deficient in magnesium. I used to take that to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So the citrate form, if you have yeah, constipation problems, is amazing. Um, and if you don't, there's other forms you can take, you know, but um, there's way a, better than taking a laxative. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ow. well, okay. So, yes, magnesium is a good one. Um, a lot of people are deficient in zinc, which for the winter time, that can be problematic because your immune system will suffer if mm. you are deficient in zinc. Um, vitamin C. I mean, a lot of people take, like, chewable vitamin C. Yeah. And that's good. Or, I mean, I swallow all mine, but... My husband will like steal my kids' chewables all the time. I'm oh my like, gosh. you've got to stop. Good old David. Doing that. Um, so vitamin C is a really important one. And then it kind of depends on what, like if you're a, whim, a woman, um, there are so many things like iodine and so many things that can affect your thyroid. So if you're having thyroid problems like mm. iodine and selenium and those I need minerals. To take that. I feel like really even important. though I'm on, because I'm hypothyroid, but I feel like I am deficient right now, even though I'm still yeah. taking what I used to take. I think my level's off. So they used to tell women who have Hashimoto's or any kind of autoimmune thyroid problems mm-hmm. to stay away from iodine, but they're kind of finding out now, well, that's only problematic if you're also deficient in selenium. So, I mean, then anyone can look all this up. And first of all, I'm not a doctor, so please just don't go start taking all this stuff without like talking to your doctor. But, um, they're finding out now that if you take selenium and replenish those levels and then you add iodine in, it can really help with your thyroid. Wow. So you just need to make sure that, be, and like vitamin D is the same way. Um, if you're taking it for bone health, you need to take it alongside with vitamin K and magnesium because uh, all the vitamins are synergistic. Like mm-hmm. they work all together, oh. you know, so if, so like if that you're. Word. Synergistic. Yeah. That was a good one, Heather. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm smart sometimes. All the time. Sometimes I'm not. Okay. Keep going. 
Oh, uh, okay. Um, let's see. What are some other good ones? Do you take like an oil, like a fish oil? Yeah, I take. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. So fish oil is a great one. Um, for skin problems, there is a new oil coming out that's like really an old oil, like super old, but they're finding out it has a lot of health benefits. It's called black cumin seed oil. Oh. And it's great to put topically if there's any kind of acne or scarring. Um, but it's also good to take internally. It's um, anti-parasitic, so it can help with parasites. It can mm. help with anything like that. And I think it's, I want to say it's high in omega nines but it's a it has this buildup that we just don't get in our diet like you're not yeah. gonna you're not gonna eat the components of this oil right so f- fish oil is good black cumin seed oil is good um a lot of women take for breast like tenderness um evening primrose oil mm. so if you've got those kind of cystic painful breast um that's a great oil what's some good um what are good things to take when you are trying to conceive. Not oh, that I gosh. am. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just mm-hmm. asking for yeah, like that's what they all say. humans. No, I'm, we're, we're not. <laughs> we're definitely not. It's pull out method all the way over here. Okay. <laughs> oh, that seems like it'd be really messy, by the way. Well, it can be. Yeah. It can be. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, let my brain go. I like have three kids, so I've been on like, um, you know, kid immune mode and now I've got to go back to women. Um I think a th- important thing with um conceiving is really getting to the bottom of what's going on with your hormones and your adrenals is mm-hmm. a big one and your adrenal gland and it being deplenished. Um I think that's kind of getting to the root problem. I had a friend in Canada who she was not she was very conventional minded and um she I I want to say did in vitro three times Mm. and it just wasn't it was nothing and and so finally she was like okay i've got to go somewhere else like yeah it's too much money it's too much too much on your body oh man yes it's very hard very very hard on your body and so she went to in canada they're very more like natural minded and so Mm. they she found a really really good chinese doctor who specialized in that and she's like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I was uh, secretly, I was like, yes, you know, because she is just very conventional, you know? Yeah. And she got pregnant about three months after being on the herbs wow. and a diet change. Wait, so what was she taking? <laughs> well, there were, it's a, and this is where Chinese medicine can really come in helpful for people who have tried most other things because the Chinese herbs nourish your blood and your body. And that's, and it's all about this. I mean, it's really its own medicine in and of itself. And it's what has been used for thousands of years. Right. And we're now tapping into that. Yeah. And it's, it's about like, so you have like weak blood or, you know, there's all these things that's studied and it's about certain herbs that can just nourish your body. Mm. So your body can do what it's supposed to do. Right. So it's not changing anything like, you know, met in medicine, like, you know, it's not adding things that shouldn't be there. Right. Or they, it's like just basically giving a certain blend of herbs and diet. Like there's certain foods that are very warming to a body mm. or cooling, depending on if you have a lot, like people, I remember this cause I went to one, I had a lot of skin issues after my third pregnancy. And he said, you have a lot of heat and fire in your, like in your body. Like yeah. that's how they look at things. So he gave me very cooling herbs. Like, ooh, like what? I don't remember. You don't know. It's all in Chinese. Oh. Like you just kind of like, well, I trust this guy. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Because oh I mean, now you can so cool. look it up online somehow. It probably would take like years to go through the Chinese. That'd be amazing. Language. But, um, but that's definitely an alternative for people who are struggling. You know, have certain mm-hmm. chronic health issues that. Like, I don't think you should drop your regular doctor and just go, but it, they're very complimentary. Yeah. And a lot of times they'll even work like cancer patients will have their Chinese doctor and then they will have their regular doctor or they'll have their homeopathic doctor. And then they'll, you know, because there's right. certain homeopathic medicines that can help detox radiation, chemotherapy. Wow. So they're all complimentary, you know, yeah. and Canada is really big on the complimentary medicine. Interesting. We're getting there, but. Heather lived in Canada. F- oh, yes. For a while because her husband he graduated from university of oklahoma as an architect and then decided he wanted to become after we got married after he got married decided he wanted to become a priest um so he went to the seminary and they moved to canada for what how long was that three Three years years, yeah for three years you were far away from me yeah it was sad but now he is a um 
a priest in Dallas, which yeah. is so cool. Oh, I love it. Well, I mean, I don't know if I love Dallas, but I like being close. Yeah, I, I do too. I like you being in the United <laughs> States. So I've been looking to kind of do a little bit of a closet makeover. And instead of buying just all brand new things, I'm going to shop from millions of closets from around America. And that's why I love Poshmark. You download the free Poshmark app. Uh, It carries women's clothes, kids' clothes, men's stuff. Um, They have tons of brands to shop from. I love shopping guest jeans, Adidas. Um, Those are probably actually my favorite. And you won't believe that the deals that you'll find on there. I found such a good deal on these Adidas tennis shoes and track suit that I've been looking for. And it is just the easiest way to buy. And you can also sell fashion items. Shipping is easy for both the seller and the buyer. It's super fast shipping. You see something you want and you can make the seller an offer. I have tons of friends that use the app too, um, that have their closets on there, who buy things on there. Um, I'm getting ready to go on a vacation. So I'm definitely going to be checking out some more stuff on there. You can get $5 off your first purchase. Just enter the referral code babies when you sign up. That's referral code babies. Um, I know another thing we we're going to talk about. So uh, one we were talking about yesterday because you or two days ago, you were doing my makeup and you were talking mm-hmm. about, which I never thought about that the beauty industry is not regulated. So there's no. lots of things that they put in our makeup that are getting into our skin and into our bloodstream, which are hurting our bodies. Because yes. you've always sold, even in, in Dotson's, you were like the makeup girl. So you were always selling like the mineral makeups and the... Because mm-hmm. I remember I used to go in and be like, ooh, what's the new thing? Or what's the yeah. new shimmery eyeshadow or, you know, whatever. Right. So, yeah, I've always been more into natural makeup. The problem with natural makeup is sometimes it's just not great. You mm. know, and I, I, my dad sold Bare Minerals for a while. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's really good makeup, but as a company, they don't regulate themselves. So even their stuff... In, so the United States doesn't regulate anything except 13 ingredients from being in any kind of makeup or skincare. Oh my Europe gosh. Europe regulates 14,000 ingredients. Stop. Yes. Yeah, so if you go buy a tube of Chanel lipstick at Dillard's, it's going to be a completely different lipstick than if you buy no. a Chanel lipstick in Paris. No. I mean completely different because it's just not regulated. That's so unless, insane. Also, bare minerals gives me hives. I can't use it. Yeah, well, and, 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 and they kind of change. When they hit it big, their formula changed. Oh, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I don't know. So they don't regulate themselves. So I am not like a person who like sells things. Like every time like Young Living comes up, I'm like, oh my gosh, these people are so annoying, you know? <laughs> but um, I we had to make extra money in Dallas. Yeah. Like it, we just, it just had to happen, and I wanted to stay home with my kids. So I started um, looking at Beauty Counter had been in my mind because they regulate themselves. So they're part of this movement, and they're very supportive of other companies too that are trying to. There, it's not just Beauty Counter. There's other natural companies who are saying we're not going to put these things in our products anymore, you know? Yeah. And they like lobby at, you know, in Washington for like, for people, for the policy change. Man, and I just cannot believe that. I can't believe there's like the terrible stuff in there. I just didn't yeah. know that. And even in some, nat- because it's not regulated, the hard thing is even some natural product products have this stuff in it because they don't like what kind of stuff is in heavy metals so like beauty counter screens their own makeup for heavy metals formaldehyde ew plastics these things that are they're now finding out i mean you can look it up on pubmed.com that are messing with our endocrine system our hormones and how many of our little i have like two little girls i mean they just constantly want to put my makeup on their lips and on and they want to use my lotions right and and i mean johnson baby and baby they're finding out that has some really bad stuff in it for little kids oh, and gosh. like and we use that on our babies totally because, so we're just fighting for policy change and we want to get safer products in the hands of everybody mm-hmm. you know we don't we want to educate like and that's why i love this company so much is there's so much education like you can go on their website and yeah you can buy their makeup but you can also just learn about right. like they have so much information about what each ingredient is because they'll list out each ingredient, what it is, where they source it from. Um, and it's just like, it's all about education. It was, it's interesting because the other day I was trying to figure out there's this, um, and someone might know the answer to this, but I got my makeup done one day and this guy was using a new concealer 
and that I had never used before. Actually, a lot of products I haven't used before. And my eyes started watering so bad and wouldn't stop. And I was like, because I'm gluten free, and I was like, I bet he goes, he goes, you have allergies, and I was like, well, I have like an allergy to gluten. He goes, ka, well, you know they don't regulate, so. I bet this has gluten in it. I was like, no way. And then I went on the um, company's website and it was like Huda Beauty. Have you heard of that? Mm-hmm. And I actually love their stuff. And I was like trying to find out and trying to find out. And I never could figure out the if it did or not. But I was like, because I was like originally, oh, I want to buy this concealer. It's so good. And then I was like, is this what's hurting my like body? Yeah, so if you're really sensitive, yeah, like some people aren't as sensitive with gluten, right. but there's those people that it will make them sick. Yeah, even like you know? lotions, mm-hmm. like if it's not gluten free, it makes my skin even more dry. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't nourish your system because right. your system sees gluten as a toxin. Right. And and what's crazy is that like these other heavy metals, formaldehyde, these things are putting in makeup. They are already toxins to everybody. Right. You know what I mean? Every, yeah. the, no one should be getting in their bloodstream. I mean, right. you go to like a hormone doctor, they're going to put you on a progesterone cream that you put on your wrist. Why? Right. Because it's going to get in your it gets bloodstream. In. <gasps> you know? Yeah. So if you're totally. putting lotion, lipstick, whatever on, it's going into your skin. It's the largest organ of your body. I don't know and it why I never affect. thought of that. That's yeah. so bad. So I'm pretty passionate about it. So I am I am actually a beauty counter distributor. Um, but I, I mean, I do use other makeup too. It's not like I'm like, oh my gosh. I think beauty counter has some of the best like foundations out there and yeah. lipsticks. And I will forever use their stuff. But I'm also like, I want to support other companies. What was that one company that you were talking about? So that, there's a website um, called, um, I think it's the organic oh, yeah. And she actually, she's just like, um, but she has, um, products I think you can get on her page, but she has a foundation brush that I'm telling everyone about this because it is life changing. It's called the crunchy foundation I mean, brush. It, you used it on my face the other day. It was amazing. I mean, I, it's just also, um, we're not making any money off of advocating any of these things. We're no, just telling you I'm what's just, amazing. because I, we all as women foundation is like the biggest, this like foundation what brush do you do? So good. And so, and my personal favorite from beauty counter is called tint skin. They have a do skin one. That's like real. Wait, like is that a, the stuff that I bought? You bought tint skin, but if you yeah. put tint skin on with your fingers, it's not going to, you're going to waste a lot of product mm-hmm. and it's not going to go on like a really flawless yeah, that look. Really good. It's going to be more like a BB cream or yeah. whatever. It's just not going to give you the coverage you want yeah. unless you have like perfect skin. Right. But if you put tint skin on with a brush, it's just like my sister-in-law who I, she hasn't even bought anything from me, but someone gave her a tube Yeah, and I didn't even know about it. And she sent me a text. She's like, I can't believe this foundation. I'm never it's like. It's so good. It's, it's you just. You know, best. I like the, um, whatever that, hol- the holiday lip glosses that they taste like peppermint. Yeah. And that's their other good one is lip glosses. Yeah, their so lip gloss their holiday good. kit has like a thousand colors and they're peppermint but their they original formula is more moisturizing. Yeah. So I actually recommend if you have dry lips, like their original formula is just going to feel yeah. good. Cause yeah. I have, I mean, I have lip problems when I wear lipstick. Oh like my it's gosh. Like, it's like, you know, it's, Ew, yeah. And my lips, you saw that you see them right now actually, but they're like so dry. It's yeah. So, so, I mean, we, okay. I'm a, I'm a woman and I want to look good. You know what I mean? I'm, I mean, yeah. But you don't want to look good at the cost of what it's doing to your body. Okay. You know, you want yeah. high performing makeup that's not toxic, that's not going to hurt you, but that works. So basically, you know? we're telling people to like, like this is what you were saying earlier when we weren't talking yet, but like to look at labels, like that's yeah. Your big so that's thing. my big thing too, and that's the thing I really like about Beauty Counter too. Is if you go on their website, they'll tell you what ingredient is in each product and where they got it from and what it's sourced from. Whoa, that's actually which really is cool. crazy. So yeah, I'm a big label reader yeah. with food, with makeup. Yeah, you're with always anything. like in the grocery store reading the labels. Yeah, and my it really annoys my husband because he'll get something like go grocery shopping and it'll be like, I mean, I don't even know what half the ingredients are. <laughs> Baby, you like, not learned this? anything from us being married for 10 years, but to turn it around and say, Hey, what's that? I yeah. don't know. Maybe you shouldn't get that. Right. So yeah, I have a theory. Like if it's, if some, if something has, whether it be, you know, whatever, a thousand ingredients in it and, or even like 50, let's say it has like 50 ingredients and yeah. you don't know where those are coming from or what they are yeah, or, you know, it's just being aware of what we're putting on our skin, what we're putting in our bodies, you right. know, or if you're going shopping for your kids at the grocery store right? and you, you know, maybe you can't afford, although Thrive Market has great uh, prices, I have to say. They do have great prices, even yeah. on their beauty stuff too. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, 
But if you're going grocery shopping, that's really hard to afford, you know, organic natural food. It just is, right. you know, but if you're, even if you're at Walmart, just start label reading. That can be yeah. a great first step if you're overwhelmed with what to feed your kids. And it if is there's overwhelming. 10 ingredients in like a piece of bread, it's probably not the best bread. Right. You know, you want to look for minimal ingredients and you want to have an idea of what they are. Right. You know, and, and even and, if you anything. don't know what it is, then just look it up and see. Yeah. And I mean, we we're our, the internet is our best friend, right? You right. know, and that's our, really our power and strength is, is, is now it's in our hands. Like yeah. we, before we might, we didn't have the, you know, accessible to say, Hey, what's this? You know, we just have to trust people. But right. now we're like, no, I'm going to figure out what this is. And I'm going to take, I mean, we are the caretakers of our home. Right. We are the, we are the moms. We right. you know can be in charge and say, Hey, I'm not going to allow that in my house right. because it's, it might be harmful to me and my kids, totally. you know? So, um, we have that power as moms, you know, and we, and, um, yeah, our husbands, I mean, I'm not saying they don't, but you know, we're the mama bears yeah. and we're the protectors. Right. And I think that we can take that and use that. So yeah, la- label reading is the first step. If you're overwhelmed on what to do, you know, with your kids or with yourself or whatever, just start reading labels and yeah. becoming more educated in what you're doing really. So I've, I mean, I, I used to be better at it. I need to start being better at it again. <laughs> no, I and, mean, and it's, and I say these things like they're easy because it's the way I grew up. And sometimes I forget that because yeah. I grew up that way. I think it's easy for everyone, but it's, it's really not. Yeah. You know, also after this conversation, we're going to Whole Foods and Heather's going to f- fix my body with herbs and things. No, no, oh, no. you are. I have t- total faith. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Anyway, and real quick, as it, this flu season's approaching, because people ask me about this all the time oh, with yeah. kids, because this, there's nothing worse than a sick kid. It's you know, horrible. It's terrible. But um, I would say things to have on hand um, are elderberry. I just bought that. Yes. It, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it's a, sox, a coxicillium. It's what? a homeopathic remedy by Boron, and it comes. you can get it anywhere, CVS, Walgreens, anywhere oh, okay and it's a little like vial of little homeopathic pills and when you first start getting sick flu whatever you just start taking those i think every I what's think it called again to, i think it's called a coxicillium it's like the longest Say it one more time. <laughs> I'm just i wish i like could just like but oh gosh well I, also if if people um want to ask you things about this you can also message her on instagram at Oh my gosh, I don't know. What's mean, your, is it Heather Dotson, Heather underscore Dotson? Underscore Heather Thompson? underscore. Uh, is that right? That's so funny because I'm just, because I'm selling beauty counter, I'm getting now more into social media, but I'm like illiterate when it comes to this kind of stuff. Okay. How do you even, I'll, I'll look you up and you here keep, I am. okay. It's Heather underscore Dodson underscore Thompson. So H E A T H E R underscore D O D S O N underscore T H O M P S O N. But um, she's like, if you have any questions, she, she will be more than happy as long as she's not completely overwhelmed. <laughs> no, I won't <laughs> be because I honestly, my heart is really to help people with health issues because I've been there. Yeah. I had major ones after my third baby. Right. And, um, and when you don't feel good, you're Used not to, a good mom. Oh, and yeah, 100%. You're not a good wife. And yeah. you're not, it's, I mean, you just really can't function right. if you don't feel good. And it's so important to feel good. And so um, that's my heart, you know, and everything is um, just to help people. I want to help people feel their best and, you know, wake up feeling like they can tackle their right. day being a mom. Um, okay. So you said elderberry and then the one a I can't pronounce. Vitamin D. Vitamin like, D. Super important to take when during the flu and up, up it. Like take two to 3,000 units more than you usually do. Okay. Um, and lots of vitamin C and echinacea. Okay. Yeah, and so have those on hand all the time, um, and any it, now I have a list of like probably ten more things to do during the flu. So totally message me, um, I will try to help you the best. But I just that's just a, a lot of people ask me, what do I give my kids when they're sick? I ask you, what do I give myself when this and this and this and this all the time? <laughs> like wow. Heather, help me. And like you know, help, it I'm might boring. not work, but just to like have the assurance of okay, I'm going to do this and yeah. You know, sometimes I've seen like things work immediately, like peppermint oil on the back of the, with, when your kid has a fever, I've seen that happen, you know, help. Yeah, and it like happened, cooling. helped me just take my fever now. I had like, wow. I got the worst cases of flu last year, like stress and Oof. we lived in an old house. And anyway, 
I was just miserable. And yeah. I, I was like, babe, just like massage Peppermore all over my spine. I can't, I don't, I had already taken Advil. It was like terrible. And it worked. And it just calmed my body down. That's I was amazing. Like, I've never had an essential oil work like that for wow. me before. And it was like, it was amazing. So sometimes you'll notice things work immediately and sometimes they work over time. But also it's important to let's help our kids not get as sick. Like they're going to get sick. Right. Let's help them not like end up in the hospital, you know, yeah. because they, it turns into pneumonia or it turns right. into a secondary right. infection. Right. Like they're going to get sick, but let's help their bu- boost their immune systems right. to fight it off. Yeah. Oh, well, th- Heather, thank you so much for, yes. for joining us on the Babes and Babies podcast. Of course. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask her. She's the nicest person ever. Yes, and I'd love to help you. And if you're interested in shopping Beauty Counter, I have my own website. It's www.beautycounter.com slash Heather Thompson two because there's like two Heather Thompson like the number it. two not T O O and not T W O oh, right exactly yeah. yeah um and you can also go to her Instagram and find it as well. Oh yes yeah, yeah. I'm learning. okay thanks for thanks for listening to us. Yes. Now on to the next yay bye bye hey guys Santa's coming tonight and Vito and I are gonna give you guys some ideas for cookies to leave for him. Did you leave cookies out for Santa? I did not. You didn't? Babe, I never believed in Santa. I told you. So we left out almost like a dozen cookies mm-hmm. when we were younger, and they were all gone. My dad was <laughs> my dad, my dad was a beast. <laughs> but it was the best part, for me at least, of Christmas Eve. I loved it. Mm-hmm. The wonder and the magic. and But he used to leave like crumbles, you know, and like yeah. maybe one that was half eaten. Mm-hmm. And we'd leave the milk out, and it was fun. I can just see your dad actually slamming all those cookies. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Santa's coming. So we need, to get, we need to leave him cookies. We need to leave him some cookies. Um, so Vito knows how much of a great cookie maker I am. Um, not always, but you've gotten better. <laughs> I'm not a good cookie maker at all, guys. But I did try one holiday cookie recipe this year so far. And it was a double chocolate cookie that had a little bit of peppermint and coffee extract in it and then I drizzled on top more chocolate and then peppermint crumbles and I feel like they turned out pretty good yeah I mean you've gotten really really good um the one cookie I would say would be your monster cookies well yeah those are good and then you can um like this recipe says to just take out the the red and the green M and M's. I already did that. I know, but that was a good. <laughs> that was a good holiday. Never cookie. mind. I made two different holiday cookies this year. I made monster cookies, the ones with oatmeal and peanut butter, and put red and green in it. Um, and those turned out really good. But one thing that I actually love, but I don't know how to make, is gingerbread cookies. Mm. I love gingerbread cookies, and I've never made them, and I'm scared to try. I feel like I've always bought them. Yeah. You can make gingerbread cookies. Of course you can make them. <laughs> Somebody makes them. Um, but one of my favorite cookies that I used to love and I actually used to post about all the time is the JoJo's from Trader Joe's, the peppermint Oreos. Oh, yeah. But the last couple of years, I just haven't been in the mood. Like I bought a yeah, box last year and it that. took me like three months to eat it and I ended up just throwing it away because I didn't even finish it. But I don't know if that's because my sweet tooth has changed or not. But... We also thought it'd be fun to tell you guys about um, different kind of cookies made around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that. So for us, for Italians, we there's there's different cookies um, that we make, but there's more different like cakes and foods. So around Christmas, we have this tall bread, and it's a sweet bread called panettone. Oh, I did like that. Yeah, and there's different variations. There's some with like nuts, some with raisins. Um, but that's something that we eat on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, um, with with a cup of coffee, or you know, just just a nice little treat. But that's not much of a cookie. And then also we make this. It's not as sweet as a donut, mm-hmm. but it's like um, it fried called? bread. It's called kudrieju. Yeah. Which we don't know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> we just know how to say it. But um, I actually do that, like that. It tastes good. similar to a donut without frosting, kind of. Yeah. It's Except for there's one kind that you put sardines in. And I actually don't mind sardines, so I thought I'd taste it and it was not good. No. <laughs> I've never even tried it. You haven't? No. Oh, man. I couldn't even... 
could never bring myself to it. Mm-hmm. But I would say for my favorite Christmas cookie would be sugar cookies. Just straight up sugar cookies. Let the kids decorate them. They're delicious. Maybe encourage the kids not to put too much frosting on. Oh my god! <laughs> His nieces and nephews made crazy. cookies and they decorated them, and it was just you couldn't find the cookie underneath the pile of frosting and decoration. Which is exciting to see creativity. Yeah, but you kind of want the cookie too, right? That's true. Which is good. But what are what are some cookies found okay, around the world? So these cookies that I found around the world, um, the only one that I could really pronounce was this Nutella meringues, which look bomb. I guess they're a French meringue. Oh, yeah. yeah those do, they, look do they have the recipe? That looks <laughs> so good. I don't know. See, we eat these too. Um n- Oh wow. I don't know That's how to a pronounce Spanish them. words. Mentesaditos con guayaba. Guayaba. Please it's... critique me. Let me know if I said that right. <laughs> They're almond shortbread cookies filled with a special guava marmalade. Under I think Puerto the ones Rican. that we have are probably not guava meringue or yeah, marmalade in them. It's just basic white people yeah. raspberry meringue in them. They're delicious, though. They are delicious. Um, another cookie from around the world I, that I can't pronounce. <laughs> is, Try to pronounce it. It's a German cookie. Um, Lepk- Lepkuchen. Lepkuchen. That, that sounds right. Um, it's so, and it looks delicious. It has cinnamon and cardamom. Um, and then... Read that description. Okay. So it says, if you thought of cinnamon and cardamom wafting through your kitchen is enough to make your mouth water, just wait until you get a tasty icing on these German Lepkuchen, which are rumored to have been invented by monks in the 13th century. Look at that. Sign me up. That looks so good. I'm not even a huge cookie person, but anything with cinnamon, I'm on board for. And then we got the Nutella meringues from France. These ones look like something similar to what you guys eat, but it said that these are um, alfajores, and they are a cookie found in Spain and Latin America. They're a deeply flavored dulce de leche and <laughs> <laughs> dulce de leche. Don't love them. Dulce de leche, and then it says a caramel made from whole milk found in Spain and Latin America. It's a little sandwich. You should put the link to this in, in the, in the I'm notes. I'm going to link this in um, the notes, but also in our Facebook group. So it said these are an Italian cookie. Do you know what these are? Baci di Dama. The name of this Italian tree translates to lady kisses. How adorable is that? <laughs> um, They're no. hazelnut, no? I don't think I have. Those look good, though. Yeah. Okay, these are the ones... Linzer cookies. So they're Austrian Christmas cookies typically made with raspberry jam. So those are similar to the ones earlier, I guess. Yeah. But you know, it'd be interesting to know from your listeners is what they leave out for Santa. Oh, what kind of cookies do you guys leave out for Santa? Because I know my nieces and nephews Uh leave out a glass of scotch and some steak. Stop it. Yes. Who? Pasquale and Lorenzo. Of course they do. Santa's a meat eater. Okay. And uh, he needs some scotch. Okay. For his long night. Stop it. They do? Yeah. Did Bruno start that tradition? <laughs> yeah. Well, Bruno's met Santa. Oh, so and he knows what he likes. He knows what he likes, yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. What do um, Dominic and Mia do? Um, That's a good question. I think just regular cookies and yeah. milk. Yeah. They're pretty. They're pretty American. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> they are. Um, you didn't right. leave out any cookies, babe? No. What are we going to do? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure we will. You said that you want to go all out for all our out. kids. So I'm planning on doing the uh, the Carly the Carly path. Where right. We just... Where you drive around looking for yeah. Santa. And... <laughs> that sounds so much it fun. Is just full. It, that does sound like a lot of fun. It's good to keep the kids' imagination running. Yeah. No, for sure. I think that's... I mean, I'm sure we'll do that. Yeah. I think the the best part about it, though, for me was the night before, the excitement... The getting together, even if the cookies didn't come out great. You mm-hmm. know, just cooking as a family. You cooked them as a family? Yeah, I'm, obviously I was young. My mom's like, let me run the oven by myself. And so she was there. We'd all top the cookies and have fun with it. And it was always a good time. This went on until last year, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> it's going to start again this year. 
I don't know why we ever stopped. <laughs> Santa still comes to my house. Right. I've been a good boy. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I did good this year. Um, But the rest of these cookies on this Cookies Around the World list is awesome. So you guys definitely have to check it out. Um, But we also... Ooh! What? Does it have fig in it? Go up. Yeah, babe. Those are your oh, Sicilian yeah, yeah, yeah. fig oh, cookies. Yeah. See, I, knew, I knew I knew those. Yeah, how do you say I that? I don't know what those are called. Uh, Cucidati, a tradition in Sicily where my grandparents are from. These bars are filled with dried figs and nuts and topped with a sweet glaze. Yeah, we have those too. I've never called them that though. But mm. those, they're almost like fig newtons, but handmade with like a, almost like a vanilla or lemon f- frosting on top. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> They, I know. We actually sell those. I don't like those, actually. I love, I like Fig Newtons. <laughs> 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 but these cookies, I think it's the icing combination with the fig, fig filling yeah, that I maybe. don't like. You just need a, a cup of an espresso next to you and yeah, get some bitterness in there if it's too sweet. Some caffeine and sugar wiring fused That's how together. We do it. I would be on a whole nother level. Um, when I was 10 years old, I started drinking coffee after dinner. After dinner. That's just what we do. I don't know how I don't know how I feel about that. I mean I, I was always told that it would stunt my growth. Is that why I'm sure? We were encouraged. You want espresso? You want espresso? Yeah. I'll do what? It. After after dinner. Are you gonna let it's our a, kids drink espresso? After if they dinner? want to, it's babe, tradition, no. babe. After if you're in high school, maybe. I sleep like a champ. I know you do. I don't. I have a cup of coffee after 2 p.m. and I can't go to bed at 2 a.m. because my heart's <laughs> pounding. So we'll talk about it. Obviously, we have some details to work out here. <laughs> um, but we know that for I guess for the traditional American cookies, it's the sugar cookies decorated gingerbread. I bet you there's some cool ones out there. They have, they have to tell you. I kept you. looking up in every place. No, your listeners probably have Yeah, awesome you guys ones. have to tell us because everything that I look up has like 55 best Christmas cookies. I'm like, okay, well, that's And I wonder lot. if any of them do anything like Bruno does where they leave something different out for Santa. Yeah, tell us if you guys what you are leaving out for Santa tonight. That's fun. That is so much fun. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys about a few of the cookies that I grew up making. Um, we did the Christmas wreaths, so it's where you take the corn corn flakes and you mix them with marshmallow cream. Oh yeah! And we dyed them green, and we made Christmas wreaths out of them, and then we decorate them. Um, we also always made homemade caramels, fudge, um, almond made roca. Homemade fudge? Yeah, my mom, not me. She was an amazing. We baker. used to buy those caramel squares. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Eat like 10 at a time. Oh, my gosh. They're so good. <laughs> um, Vito's that guy that can slam like 10 cookies and still has a six-pack, so it's ridiculous. Me, not so much. Hey. Um, and then later he'll be like, I have a stomachache. I don't know why. Why don't I feel good? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, babe. <laughs> um, we also always made, uh, which I am actually going to make this year. Um I have to get the recipe from my mom, but you take a marshmallow and you roll it in caramel and then you roll it in Rice Krispies and it is so good. Like a, just a, a, a jumbo, car, a jumbo marshmallow? Yeah. And then what do you do with it? Do you put it in the microwave or you just eat no, it? No, then you eat it. Sounds easy. Yeah. It sounds like something I could do, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Can't mess that up. Um, but we also, we had a lot of fun cookie traditions and things like that. Um, I know everyone's going to be getting ready for the new year and getting all healthy, but right now most people are snacking yeah, on those last minute we're, treats. We're all about eating healthy and oh, treating your body right, but it's Christmas. Have yourself a cookie. Santa needs something good. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'll be able to eat that many sweets this year though. Like I feel like as I get older, my body just can't handle Same. me treating it like a dumpster anymore. But I'm going to so. have some. But, well, I know you will, yeah. for sure. I'm sure I'll have a little bit, too. Before we sign off, we want to share with you guys the Christmas traditions that people talked about in our Facebook group. We asked you guys to share them with us. I know a lot of people out there are um, starting to form a family together or just met their person or maybe even on their own, and they're not sure 
what traditions that they want to continue or have. So we thought it'd be a good idea to share other people's traditions and see if there's anything in there that you kind of want to take on and make it your own. Um, a lot of people get a new ornament every year. Some of these are really cute. I know. <laughs> Um, a lot of people said that they get a new ornament every year. Um, some people get a fancy ornament that they keep in a special box. Someone else wrote in that they, um, they make salt dough ornaments every year and give it to family members along with their Christmas gift. So it's a little bit of homemade stuff. I like that one. Scroll back up. Taylor Pisano said, we do at least one new ornament a year, which is stored in her own special box. We have two trees, a nice decorated one and the family one we put all of our family knick-knack ornaments over the years. We used to do that growing up, too. You guys do do that. Well, we don't have a tree right now, but... Um, yeah, I've seen it every year, but this yeah. year's been a little different. But um, That's really cute. Because mm-hmm. then you could see, like, year by year, maybe, like, an updated picture or mm-hmm. just kind of what the kids are up to, what they think is cool or fun. And mm-hmm. I like that one a lot. Um, this other person said that they paint a Christmas ball ornament every year, Courtney, uh, with memories from last year, and it's so much fun reading back on what happened over the years. That's really cool. Yep, a new ornament uh, each year. Someone was saying too they want to start the tradition of um, was it giving meals to the homeless or yeah, making backpacks, backpacks for the homeless and help cook a meal. And then a lot of people said that they would love to start doing that with their kids. Um, So one good way, I'm not sure, we have it here in Chicago, is pads. Did you have that in Nebraska or Vegas? It's providing a dinner and shelter for the homeless. And basically any local church in our area, they have pads during the holidays. Um, And that was great for me as a kid. We used to go and just to see, you know, it's a season of giving. And um, that was a fun tradition that we did. But it was very organized and not too much responsibility on yourself, but you're able to, to partake and, you know, right. spread the joy. Mm-hmm. I think that that's very important. Um, a lot of people said the new ornament. A lot of people said matching pajamas. Um, the waiting up till midnight to open up one gift on Christmas Eve. I like this one because it's Christmas Eve is appetizers and games and then Christmas morning is a big brunch. Yeah, that's nice. I like this too, that the grandma got this lady, Mara, an ornament every year and wrote a note to go with it. And the note highlighted my favorite things at the time, my friends, things I did in the past year, every year. Then when I decorated the tree, I got to read all the notes. So many memories. Oh, that's so sweet. That is very sweet. This is so much fun. Thank you guys so much for sharing this. A lot of people said matching pajamas, even though they're adults. Uh, I mean, Vito and I have matching onesies. We try to match everything. Well, we have matching sweatpants. Yeah. <laughs> we actually love matching. You just said it makes them feel closer to me when we match. I don't know why guys are nervous to match. I think it's, hey, that's my woman. Hey, that's my woman. I'm going to match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, some people do. Homemade oh. pretzels and fondue. Rianne White's. Share some more information on that. Right. Your mom said that they did fondue one year before there was all the grandkids. My mom? Yeah. I don't remember that. No, that's what she said. (laughs) Oh, Um, that's cool. This is really cool. Go ahead. Um, So Danielle Steinhardt said that one of our family traditions is to pick a country for Christmas, which we plan the food around for Christmas dinner. It's been a lot of fun. That is so cool. That's really cool. Yeah. That way I love you can that. Experience different cultures and stuff. Yeah, I wanted. I remember I said before I want to have like Thai night. I want to have Mexican night. I mm-hmm. want to have Greek night and make all the food. I just haven't done that. <laughs> Valerie does something different. She goes on vacation or wanting to go on vacation for Christmas. That's different. Mm-hmm. Some see a different warm. area. Yeah. She said that they're still figuring out their traditions, though. Yeah, and then a lot of people said they kind of split their time. Maybe go to their dad's side of the family, go to their mom's or to their husband's, and then theirs. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. 
we're going to rotate holidays. So we were yeah. Thanksgiving with my family this year. So we'll do Christmas with Vito's. It's hard because like our fam- my family is not here, whereas your brother's wife, like their family's close. So mm-hmm. they could do Christmas Eve with them, Christmas Day with us, or yeah. vice versa. Whereas mine, it's not like we can fly to Texas Christmas Eve and then come back Christmas Day. Yeah, we're going to have to travel a little bit more. A little bit more. Or I think I'm trying to get everybody up here. I think that'd be fun. Have everyone here for Christmas. That's nice. Well, whatever, just scrolling through these, what's nice is everyone's got different ideas or different traditions, but they all focus around bringing the family together, Mm -hmm. which has touched my heart. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you guys so much for sharing um, and being a part of the Facebook group and uh, sharing this stuff with us and um don't forget to share your cookie recipes yes. too. <laughs> um i am going to read you guys a little christmas poem to wish you a happy christmas it says <laughs> <laughs> you feel so awkward. i do i heard the bells on christmas day their old familiar carols play And wild and sweet, the words repeat, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I looked out a bunch of different ones, and it was really hard to try to find one. (laughs) But for real, guys, we wish you a Merry Christmas and and Happy Holidays, and we hope that you're just blessed this holiday season and that your house uh, is filled with love and family and connection and um, deep, meaningful conversations and that when we hear from you guys over this next week of how everything went, that we can just feel the love through your messages. Yeah. Um, just so you guys know, a heads up, we're not going to have um, a podcast out next week on New Year's Eve. We're just, everyone's going to take a break, spend time with their families and just get ready for the new year. So um, next Monday, enjoy. Enjoy New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Be safe. Be safe. Um But yeah, we love you guys and thank you so much for being a part of this group with us and and listening. So enjoy your Christmas or holiday or whatever you celebrate. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Babes and Babies, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It. 